The aim of the research is really to kind of counter this idea of suburbia as a place where people are kind of passive and, and selfish and materialistic. So we're wanting to show that in fact what we're seeing increasingly in wealthy developed nations around the world is that people in, in the suburbs are becoming very switched on to, to global green issues. And in our research, we're, we're finding, uh, particularly in, in the inner suburbs of Melbourne, that there are lots of grassroots movements occurring around green issues. One um, project that we're, we're looking at is the way in which people are turning their houses into green spaces and thinking about those questions of sustainability in their own homes. And obviously that's, you know, th there's lots of practical things people are doing in terms of putting water tanks in and um, turning their, their houses into in certain cases their own little energy producers. People are putting in you know, solar panels and generators and things like that. But we're also really interested in the way um, in which the design of houses is increasingly including recycled materials. And people are bringing um, used goods and recycled materials into their actual the decor of houses. So um, shops like Industria in Fitzroy and Melbourne, for instance, are selling old factory goods and used hospital um, you know, furniture, etc. And people are now actually paying quite high prices for these kinds of, um, I guess, what, you, what you'd see is ex-industrial um, uh, pieces of furniture that they're then integrating into their homes in all sorts of interesting ways. Sustainability and placemaking has always been about creating great places, but it's also about creating meaningful and connected places. Places that really um, resonate to a people's sense of place. So for us, placemaking is also about the new environmentalism, but also hopefully it starts to redefine how we consume. Instead of the ultimate growth for growth sakes, placemaking starts to say, well, we can do things in a much more resilient and sustainable manner. And that really means about going local, but keeping a global context. Well, the other thing we've been interested in is hard rubbish. Hard rubbish collecting is a real phenomenon in Melbourne. And that's, that's something that we're going to be researching is how people are increasingly recycling and sharing goods through their neighbourhood. Uh, what we're also interested in is the increasing interest in second-hand goods and the way that people are deciding not to go and buy new disposable um, commodities, but to actually buy, say, vintage or second-hand goods. And often these, these kinds of um, consumer choices, I think, are, they're not just about green issues, but I think they're also about, obviously, style and aesthetics and, and kind of what's cool. But I think all those things are becoming increasingly entangled. I always say we have to make sustainability and placemaking really sexy and, and fun because they're the great human motivators. If we can get that happening, then it gets people to enjoy the process. And that's what people get attracted to. One of the problems of the word sustainability is that it's got a whole lot of vague, ambiguous meanings. It's a new area of life and so we're beginning only now to learn its full ramifications. Its benefits are both in the present day and long term. Living more sustainably now helps create a better social environment, a better physical environment in the local area but provides opportunities for people elsewhere in the world to also develop in ways which contributes to their quality of life. And so there's a strong social justice dimension, a strong moral dimension to living sustainably. It has to come from the grassroots because the creative energy is bubbling up from that. But I do want to say it, it, that's not the total solution. Government and big corporates need to be part of that trilogy. Um, and governments need to be the facilitators of that change and create the conditions and incentives to unleash those, um, those thousands of, especially in Melbourne, thousands of small, small creative groups. A lot of these grassroots groups are now starting to connect, partner, coalesce, and strategically starting to align towards a larger uh, grouping, if you like. So that's exciting because I think that's where we're going to start to see some political shifts.